Alright, review of an Elvis movie, and there's only one way to start this. By doing an Elvis impersonation. Except I can't sing, and I don't own an Elvis outfit. So just imagine I did that. It's Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. Starring Matt. Today's episode, Harem Scarum. Welcome back. I'm Matt, and this is Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. Today we're taking a look back at the film career of Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. And while Elvis has made his fair share of cheesy movies, perhaps none is cheesier than Harem Scarum. Harem Scarum is what your mom tries to call the Beatles' helter-skelter most of the time. It was also an Elvis movie released in 1965 following a string of box office hits by the rock superstar. The film was directed by Gene Nelson, who a year earlier had worked with Elvis on Kissin' Cousins, a film I presume was put out by the Alabama Tourism Board. He also directed Giant Gila Monster Returns. I'm kidding, he's the first director on this show to not have directed a Giant Gila Monster movie. Although he did appear on a few episodes of Gunsmoke with Giant Gila Monster producer and Killer Shrew star Ken Curtis, so few degrees of separation. It was written by Gerald Drayson Adams, who, well is a writer, that's for sure. Besides Elvis, the film also stars Marianne Mobley, who was in a film called Bandit. Bandit Bandit. Because she had to have something on her resume that had a worse title than Harem Scarum. Mobley, like most of the cast, is mostly known for her work in television. It seems like everyone in this film but Elvis ended up on Bonanza, Gunsmoke, or Mod Squad. Some in all three. And this movie really wants you to know it has Elvis in it. More so than it wants you to know what the title is. And I can't blame them. The film had a lot of negative reception even before coming out. According to IMDb, after reading the script, Elvis's manager tried to have a talking camel added to the movie so they could market it as more of a comedy. But Elvis wanted to do the film because he felt it would be a more serious role. Dude, Nick Rivers is a more serious role than this. But no reason to take my word for it. Just take a look. The film opens on, what else, an Elvis song. Going to travel, going to travel wild and free. Lucky you, this is the catchiest song in the film. Our story begins with people watching a cheesy Elvis movie. Who'd want to watch someone watching an Elvis movie? Get it? Because that's what you're watching? The movie in the movie features Elvis, or, I'm sorry, Johnny Tyrone, fighting some Arabian villains. He punches a cheetah I'm here my serenade. and skip. The film is being shown to Middle Eastern diplomats as part of a goodwill tour. I'm sure they enjoy being depicted as villains easily defeated by the white man. And then, frickin' again! Gonna go where the desert sun is. Then again, given Elvis's acting chops, best to keep him doing what he knows best. After that, Johnny gets invited to the palace of King Turinshaw by his brother, Prince Dragna, and his assistant, Aisha. Which is somewhere no American has ever been invited. Wait, what is this? You could afford Elvis, but not a real desert? Priorities, people. Uh, Aisha. Is she some relation to you? Aisha, Mr. Tyrone, is Aisha. Good night. Good night. So, uh... Okay for a banger then. Some guys sneak up to the camp, but it's okay, they seem friendly. After all, they're dressed like Count from Sesame Street. But right when it looks like Elvis is gonna get some, Aisha slips him a Mickey and he gets kidnapped by the gang of Ming the Merciless cosplayers. But maybe they're just taking him back to his home planet. Next we meet the king and his daughter, Princess Shalimar. But Dragna shows up to tell the king that the king has been kidnapped. Johnny wakes up in a room full of scantily clad women, and... I know I skipped the other songs, but this one seems real important. You know. To the story. Shoot, now I feel bad for stabbing those guys in the white van. Getting kidnapped looks awesome. Hey, you real? Yeah, that's what I'd say. If I ever woke up next to a real one. But invaders from the planet Cockblock show up and take Elvis to see the King of Assassins. This must be the playroom. 
Did Elvis just make a BDSM joke? So Sinan, Lord of Assassins, says he needs Johnny to kill someone important. And here's where things get weird. You'd expect some type of Three Amigos Galaxy Quest Bugs Life thing going on here where the actor is mistaken for the character he plays and hijinks ensue. But there's never any indication that Johnny can't do the things his character does. It's always played off like Johnny is this awesome assassin, like he is in the movies. And while well, granted, there were people like Bruce Lee who were as hard-ass in real life as they were on screen. Look at this guy. Johnny is not an assassin. He's not even much of an actor. He's Elvis. Also, why does Elvis look more Middle Eastern than these Middle Eastern women? Then again, his home in Tennessee probably looks more like the Middle East than this set does. What's that? This is the set from a Cecil B. DeMille film? Well, that explains that. So Johnny meets a thief named Zaka, who more or less says they're totally trapped there. Until Johnny offers him $10,000, and they come up with an escape plan. I, uh, perform certain, uh, services for my Lord Sinon, for which he pays me very handsomely. Ah, one of those jobs. I made one in the last three episodes. I really ought to have more discipline. So they wait till the guards change, and... Wow, it's like they cut Tor Johnson into five smaller Tor Johnsons. So they climb the wall, and... Wait, didn't he say they were escaping... When darkness falls... But while escaping, Johnny climbs a wall and lands next to the princess, and it's love at first sight. I'm Johnny Jerome, an American. You, you have heard of America. No, you haven't. You haven't heard of America. Yet you speak perfect English. Uh, I'm to meet my friend at the Pool of Omar. Did you drop me off at, uh, when you were to the Taj? Uh, drop you off? You do have a car, don't you? Johnny, you're an idiot. There are no cars in Lunacan. King Torrenshaw does not permit the Western civilization to enter his kingdom. But I do know what a car is. Come to think of it, how did they find out who Johnny was? That's, uh... I am called Yanni. God, a Yanni Elvis crossover? It's worse than I thought. So the princess, I mean Yanni, which is just the Germanic pronunciation of Johnny. Great secret name there, princess. Takes Johnny to the spot where he said he'd meet Zaka. He sings a song about, I don't know, William Kissinger or something. I tuned out. When you meet by chance, it's not just by chance, it's kismet. Then he tells Princess Yanni that the Assassin King wanted him to kill someone important, which she assumes is her father the king, and runs off. Elvis then meets up with Zaka, and they devise a plan to escape through the mountains with a musical troupe during Ramadan. I don't know, Elvis is a singer. I don't buy it. The dancers' names are Sapphire, Amethyst, and Emerald. Can you guys do me a favor and just write your own Steven Universe joke? Thanks. Maybe they could use a little help. Yes, you're helping all the half-naked women you meet. Which, by the way, is a great way to get sunburnt in the desert. Good thing they're on the MGM backlot. And apparently Elvis is the devil because he gets a band of invisible demons to play backup for him. Shake the little tambourine. Shake a ring a jing jing a ling. Shake, shake one of the dancing queens. Shake that tambourine, that tambourine. He is an American, which means nothing. But he is filthy rich, which most assuredly means something. You know, I take it back. This movie is accurate. Oh, and now please watch closely. You know, musical numbers usually tie into something, help the plot along, instead of bringing it to a dead halt. And come on, you're Elvis, these songs shouldn't all sound the same. But Aisha and her assassins show up and tell Johnny in order to save him and his friends' lives, he must kill the king. Meanwhile, the princess is daydreaming of... Say you mind, then ask me what another friggin' musical number. Where are your thoughts, my lady? At the Pool of Omar with the American. It seems I cannot hide anything from you, Leah. For the first time, I see the light of young love in your eyes. You know, being isolated for 2,000 years, they missed out on this thing called acting. 
The king and them are all worried about the assassins and the possibility of a traitor, but the king's brother assures him. It is safe to assume that Captain Harrod's advance was seen by an outpost, for I'm certain there are no traitors here in the palace. Okay, the king's brother is the traitor. Forget that that's the plot twist to every movie ever. He was with Aisha at the beginning of the movie. You know, the assassin girl? And the fact that he voiced Mr. Freeze on Batman the Animated Series isn't helping his case either. So the musical troupe is hired as the entertainment for the feast, and... <laughs> Must be a cultural thing. So Johnny, dressed as Emperor Palpatine, goes to kill the kid! But Princess Not Yanni recognizes him. No, I don't want to kill him, I just want to talk to him! Actually, I'm with Johnny on this one. Nothing is stopping him from going, Oh, hey there, Mr. King. Uh, these assassins, uh, want me to kill you. You gotta have, like, an army or something, right? Just, uh, give them hell. Oh, I feel a song coming on. One through a party in the county jail. The prison band was there, they began to wail. <laughs> I wish. No, it's just another song that's completely indistinguishable from any of the other numbers in this film. Death of a thousand cuts awaits us at any moment. Wait, the death of a thousand cuts? That's the name of my new death metal single. Oh, Allah, protect me, for I am an honest man. <laughs> not even a little bit. So Baba, yes, that's his name, saves them and they make their escape. Allah, protect my filthy rich client and all that beautiful American foreign aid. Now this is a religion I can get behind. So Johnny and Baba mission impossible themselves in and explain the situation to the king. So they fake the king's death and sneak into the assassin's palace to find... It was the king's brother who betrayed him. Oh, there's a big surprise! That's an incredible... I think I'm gonna have a heart attack and die from that surprise! It's the only Aladdin joke in this whole video. Aren't you proud of me? Oh, oh, and guess what his motivation is? So, now your majesty is free to let the Bakir Oil Company open those vast oil deposits in the Valley of the Moon. Long live the king. Oh, and the assassins double-crossed him. M. Night Shyamalan is rolling in his grave right now. But M. Night Shyamalan's not dead. Not yet. Johnny apprehends Sanan, but it seems there's no way to fight off the assassins and the royal army. They come up with two plans, but neither will work. Uh, it's like the chores in an election year. Yeah, I wish both our choices were that bad. But Zaka promises his thief buddies will help fight in exchange for some money. Yeah, or how about in exchange for not arresting all of you for being known criminals? An all-out battle ensues, the king goes to kill his brother, and Elvis beats some dudes up. Assassin! Assassin! We heard you the first time. This kingdom is mine! Yeah, no chance, you're losing hard. Oh, I guess they should have killed him sooner, because all the assassins leave after that. So the king exiles his brother, and Johnny goes back to America to become a singer. Look, even Elvis is ready for this movie to be over. And frankly, so am I. While the movie is incredibly cheesy with lots of fun, ham-fisted parts, it never crosses that threshold into utter ridiculousness. The songs are so repetitive and forgettable that even the most die-hard Elvis fans won't find them enjoyable. Really, I agree with Elvis's manager. They should have gone all out with this and had stuff like a talking camel. It's stupid, just not stupid enough. But next time... Well... One of my favorite holidays is coming up. So be prepared for that. Gonna travel, gonna travel wild and free. I'm gonna pack my bags because it. <laughs> what are you doing here, by the way? The title? Harem Scarum? Harem is only a few letters off from... I swear to God, if you make a Harambe joke... Mm. I still have a knife. From Scarum, the other word in the title. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hashtag dicks out.